Super Robot Wars, baby. Don't you just love that sweet smell of over-the-top anime mech attacks? Well, I do. Super Robot Wars has quickly become one of my favourite series after stumbling upon it last year, with the series' most recent entry being Super Robot Wars T. This release X is a slightly older title, originally on the PlayStation Vita and PS4, and is the second most recent entry. Let's find out how it holds up on the Switch, and if the port was worth it or not. The story for this one is set in another world, a mystery, hence the X nomenclature in the title, meaning unknown. It also stands for cross, they couldn't make their minds up, but anyways, you are an original character plonked into this anime crossover bonanza. You can choose between a male or female protagonist, and they take on the role of a mage on the otherworldly Al Worth. You are there to protect the saviour of this world, who is transported to this region in order to restore a sacred mountain to its former glory. In classic anime fashion, this saviour is a fourth grader who rides a dragon-powered mech. Yeah, he's not the only one transported here, however, as dozens of famous anime series are dumped into this world in order to help out and perhaps hinder. The plot is all over the place. Literally, you go here, there, get sidetracked here, everywhere, uh, but I really enjoy this stuff. I actually love the otherworldly feel present throughout most of this one. It makes it different from the norm, a place where there's magic and wonder intertwined with the mech action. I really like it and it may be my favourite in the series so far. The gameplay remains as familiar as ever. If you've been keeping up with my reviews of the series thus far, you'll know that these games are turn-based strategy RPGs with more style than anything else out there. It pans out in a similar fashion to the Fire Emblem style of strategy games, whereby you move all your units first, do all your business, end the turn, and then the enemy team has their go. I've always said that it's not my favourite kind of strategy. I find a stat-based approach to turns more tactical, but it's a minor point. When you attack an enemy unit, you have to be careful, since they will most likely retaliate with a counter-attack. I really enjoy this style of attack because it's always quite risky. If your unit is low on health, it may be wise not to get a cheeky attacking before someone else finishes them off, since you'll probably go down with the ship. While each unit has a handful of attacks, there's also lots of skills that you'd be wanting to use. Before the face-off between two units, you may want to use some of them, which are called spirits. They can be from the unit who's going to fight, or be passed on by some passive units on the field. They can range from giving you 100% accuracy for one turn, boosting your defense against one attack, or even healing a unit beforehand. Despite the game being easy, you'll definitely want to take advantage of these as much as possible, especially against the boss enemies who are always much beefier than any single unit that you have, and they will hit you hard and very accurately. Battles are long and drawn out. Dozens of characters on the field, each battle often with multiple stages whereby you think you've almost won until enemy reinforcements come along. Battles have two goals, at least in the standard and higher difficulties. Uh, the first one is just to complete the mission, usually by wiping out all the enemies, and a secondary goal which may be something slightly more obscure, like getting one of your allies to have five kills in a battle. They are mostly easy enough to accomplish, but you'll definitely have to keep an eye out a little more, and generally do a bit more planning, which always adds an extra layer of depth. With around 50 chapters, depending on how committed you are to the story, and if you don't skip battle animations, then you're going to be looking at around 40 to 50 hours of playtime, just on the story mode, if you want to take it all in and smell the roses. Obviously, if you start skipping or speeding up stuff, it will drastically decrease, but then there's a special place in hell for those people. Joking aside, considering this also comes with 20 bonus missions already on the cartridge, add another 10 hours on top of that. You've got yourself a meaty game. There are RPG elements within it too. Between the long missions, you can upgrade your mix with money and improve their pilot skills. It kind of looks complicated, and I feel it's glossed over a bit too much by the games in terms of explanation. Like, what are the benefits and such, but as long as you roll with it, upgrade a bit of this, a bit of that, you're golden. The skill tree, especially in how it links up with learning abilities and then you use the tactical points, kind of makes it slightly unintuitive. I don't even know what I just said then, but anyways, you will be accustomed to it after you've asked yourself why it's laid out so weirdly a few times. Overall, the gameplay has always been more style over substance. It's simplistic enough, despite the numbers and stats often being thrown in your face. You'll be having such a great time with it though, smashing through the easy levels, watching the awesome attacks, meeting new characters and so on, that you'll forget how much of a cakewalk it is. Yes, there are numbers like morale, SP, EN, ammo, support attacks, accuracy and stuff like that, but you can mostly just forget it and enjoy the ride. Saying that though, we highly advise you turning up the difficulty to the max with whatever little difference that makes. 
Also, just a side note, if you do want a similar style game with more of a challenge, then I highly recommend you checking out my review of SD Gundam G Generation Cross Race, which is a mouthful, but while it also lacks the amazing style and focus of Super Robot Wars, it will definitely put up a fight and give you more of a challenging strategy experience. Visually, this is where the game shines for me. Obviously, it's pretty limited in certain areas like the battlefield where you move your troops around, but the incredible attack animations will always blow me away every single time. Its style exemplified to the point where you actually feel like you're watching an episode of your favorite anime show, except with all the best bits and none of the fluff. Well, if you ignore the endless amounts of story between battles. But anyways, I've said it before, I'll say it a thousand times, Nintendo need to hire these guys to do attack animations for Fire Emblem or a new Advance Wars if one is to ever be made. That would honestly be a dream come true for me. Fire Emblem Three Houses looks cool and all, but this style is just so much better. Attacks are wonderfully over the top, overly long and oozing with anime hype. I could see the same attacks over and over again without ever being bored. Of course, if you're a heathen, you can skip them. Another thing, like in the other games, you can actually speed up the attack animations, which is slightly more acceptable because that can actually make it an extra layer of awesome sometimes. A lot of the environment work is the kind of stuff that we've seen before in previous games and in the sequel, so it's disappointing to see things being reused constantly and so obviously, but that is a minor gripe. I do want to state that this looks absolutely wonderful in handheld mode, Yes, it looks great on the big screen too, but when some sprites get really stretched, it can be a little bit distorted once in a while. But when it's in the palm of your hands on the Switch's small little screen, oh, I could stare it all day. Bright, colourful, in your face and full of awesome anime action. The audio is equally excellent throughout, no doubt thanks to most of the music tracks being from the respective anime series found within the game. When a character from a certain series begins an attack, their theme music will play and it's just incredible, truly gets you pumped up. The variety is insane too, with some of the old anime series, you obviously have some cheesy but also delicious saxophone jazzing off, the more modern series have like great guitar solos, and you even have some poppy stuff thrown in there, and it works incredibly well. Sadly, voice acting is minimum, only popping up during attack animations. It's a shame considering there is just tons and tons of dialogue, but then again, that's probably why, so they would have had to pay a fortune for the voice actors. Super Robot Wars X is thankfully available in English both digitally and physically. On the eShop, there are two versions of the game you can buy from the Japanese eShop. The standard edition is priced at 8,360 yen, which is around £59, $77.69, Euros, dude. While the premium sound edition comes in at a whopping 12,760 yen, which is a massive £90, €106, and $118. Yeah? That bit's not worth it. Stick with the standard edition. If you want to purchase digitally, you'll need some Japanese eShop credit, which you can find in the description and the pinned comment. Although, as an interesting alternative download option, you may want to look at the newly established Hong Kong eShop, which on there is priced at 449 Hong Kong dollars, which is a more reasonable 57 US dollars or 44 pounds. That's if you can find out how to purchase it from the Hong Kong eShop. Not the easiest if you're outside of Hong Kong or China, that's for sure. It's also a place where you can now get Super Robot Wars T with English as a download. That was previously only available via physical. Check that Hong Kong eShop out. Anyways, yeah, Super Robot Wars X is also available physically for a very delicious import with English on the cartridge. If you want to pick that up, please do so using our links below in the description and the pinned comment. If you buy from that, then we will get a small cut which helps support the show massively and funds the reviews for these import games that you all love. All the links below have the game with English on the cartridge. Just be wary of any import fees that may be added on when the game arrives on your doorstep. Sometimes that shocks people, but you know, it sadly comes with the territory. It ain't cheap, but these games never are. Bandai must have to pay massive license fees to all the different anime studios involved, plus music rides, plus, you know, it's a niche genre. If you want this kind of awesomeness, you have to pay the price. And I have for all of them, as you can see. And I don't regret it one bit, but I fully realize I may be a crazy person. I personally think it's worth it. It's worth it to try at least one of them. It's worth it to buy one of them, for sure. Three, like me, Maybe slightly over the top due to their similarities, but if you're a fan, of course it's worth an import. Overall, while well, you guys kind of know what I think of Super Robot Wars in general, I love them and I can't get enough. And if you've been in a similar situation, Super Robot Wars X is another must-have. If you've tried one and felt 
that you've had your fill, then this isn't going to be one that you need to add to your collection. But for me, this stands alongside Super Robot Wars T as my favorite in the series so far. Great animation, great music, intriguing story, and an all-round great time for fans of mechs and animes, and even for those who aren't, like me. I don't care about mech, I don't care about anime, but I love this game. Another excellent addition to the Switch's library and one of the essential imports of 2020, it's a 9 out of 10. Right guys, head over to watch my reviews of the series so far, Super Robot Wars V, Super Robot Wars T, and why not take a look at SD Gundam G Generation Cross Rays, which is kind of like a sister series. We'll see you guys over there, take care. Hey,